had a conversation with uh, with somebody uh, just regarding the the, uh, the challenges that are being faced on a on a remote location, and you know, I'm struck by how uh, how true the following litmus test or filter is when you're dealing with performance challenges and and um, you know people particularly in supervisory roles but it can apply to, to everywhere um, how they how, how you can break them into two kind of broad categories even just to start the, uh, the the process of figuring out what to what to do with folks that maybe aren't aren't filling filling the role as you would expect or as you would hope and so I'll offer up this process First and foremost, you find out there's an issue, whether that's somebody not following a process properly, somebody that's not maybe handling uh, people very well, uh, somebody that is reporting violations and you know, rules like crazy, so they're really leading with, a, with an iron fist, uh, somebody that's not counseling people, but more just um, uh, being a lot, lot, lot more autocratic, others that are are just uh, maybe timid. They're not self-starters. They don't take initiative. They don't step in and actively, uh, you know, work with people uh, for for various reasons. So, first thing you need to do, obviously, is figure out what is going on. You know, to just get a good sense for for some ground truth, we call it. And that means oftentimes physically going to that location. And I understand that. You know, in distributed workforces where we're at now, sometimes that's impossible. But however you can do that, the the onus is on you to to really figure out what is going on, what what is the situation, what is that ground truth, not in anecdotes and hearsay, but as much as you possibly can, just get a good current state of what the situation is. So that's step one. Step two is to now talk to the individual and determine one of two things. And again, this is now where the, the, the algorithm works or starts. One of two things. One, the individual is either willing but unable. So they are willing to do it, but they're unable to do it. So they want to do a good job, but they can't. So the unable part is maybe they don't have the proper training. They don't have the proper um, resources. Maybe that's time. Anything like that. But, but they're willing to. They want to do a good job. And so that's the first step, is figuring out, are they willing and just unable to do that? Because that is somebody that is highly coachable, uh, implement measures to for, for mentorship, uh, walk along somebody, you know, walk alongside them and help them out, and give them guidance, those sorts of things. That is a great person to have on your team, in my opinion. All right, the other option in our algorithm is that person is able to do the job so they do have the tools they do have the resources they have the time they have the training they have the experience they have all of those things so they have all of that but they're unwilling previously we had somebody that was willing but unable coachable on this side now we have somebody that's able to do the job but unwilling and therein lies now the algorithm difference once you have established that that person will obviously need some coaching and mentorship as much as possible. That's the responsible thing to do for the most part. Unfortunately, this is now a path that's leading towards what we're calling performance management. So performance management entails a whole different set and subset of processes and procedures and reviews and policy, all of that stuff. And unfortunately at this point, the attitude is that this employee, this worker, this team member is leading their way out of that team, that project, that organization, your team, whatever that looks like, okay? So I want to offer that guidance up. If you're having trouble with somebody, first start with that good current state. Secondly then, is it a case of them willing to do it but unable or is it a situation where they are able to do it but unwilling skill versus will is it a skill issue or is it a will issue 
and hopefully that will start guiding you right off the bat very very effective litmus test to make sure that you're starting them off on the path that will uh, you know where, where you can help them ultimately and when I say help performance management is also help uh, you're, you're really being hands-on and a lot more detail oriented and honestly my approach is maybe this is not the right assignment maybe this isn't the right environment maybe this isn't the right team and that's okay that's okay it's in everyone's best interest to maybe exit that that person because somebody that is 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 unwilling that is like a cancer within the team particularly if that person is a leader because every time that you ask them to do something they will they will often say yeah yeah no problem I'll do that and then turn around and do something else or if they do follow your direction which is yay it'll be begrudgingly and it will often be associated with editorial comments like I don't agree with this policy I think it's stupid but I'm not in charge they are you know those kinds of things so that has a real dire impact on on a team culture team dynamics and, and, and outcomes so if, if performance management is not a necessarily in and of itself something bad it's actually something that that's the responsible thing to do as a leader um, to make sure that that you're not poisoning a culture and that you're setting everybody up for success including the person that's being performance managed because as I said maybe it's a situation where they're just not just not a good fit and that's okay we'll agree to disagree and, and uh, you know part ways and and that's just fine but we don't want to be too quick to part ways we want to make sure that we've gone through some due diligence and, and some coaching and determined what is the situation moving forward so hopefully that's uh, that's helpful